Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so excited that you decided to connect today. Right now, grab something to take notes with as we begin today's message. Good morning, family. <laughs> How are we doing today? Good. So far this morning, we got to witness nine people getting water baptized, which is absolutely amazing. They made the decision to outwardly express what God is doing internally with them, and we got to witness that. We get to walk, walk alongside them this morning and continue to build God's kingdom. That's absolutely amazing and so happy we got to witness that today. For this Sunday, I'm continuing on in our series called Shape Up. And this series is about spiritual formation. And the whole idea of this series is for us to fully understand God's design for us to be transformed into the likeness of Jesus. So in the same way that we can train our physical bodies in order to be healthier and grow, we can do the exact same thing spiritually. There are a few things that we can implement in order to build up our spiritual formation or our spiritual habits. Week one, Pastor Josh kicked off the series with an example using a blender. And he was explaining the refining process that blending happens when we are connected to our source. And God is our source. And that's the only way that that process happens. And then last week, Pastor Mike went into the Lord's Prayer and he used a scaffold to share the different framework steps of prayer that take us to new heights. And then for this week, I'll be talking about how we can live out our spiritual formation for ourselves and for others. So our key text for this morning is out of Matthew chapter 25. And the verses are 31 through 36. And it reads, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name and we thank you for today. We thank you for all those that were baptized this morning. We thank you for the message that you have for us. May we have ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive what you have for us this morning. Lord God, speak to me and speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. So this past week was Valentine's Day. No? <laughs> so this holiday can be either really nice or really bad, and it seems like we have that mix in the room, which is good. <laughs> when me and my husband first started talking, he wanted us to alternate Valentine's Day. So one year it would be on me to plan the whole shebang, and then the next year would be his, and we'd have an on year and an off year, which sounds great, right? Sounds like you get a break. His birthday's three days after Valentine's Day. <laughs> so I know my strengths and weaknesses, and I said, every other year I cannot plan Valentine's Day and your birthday. I'm going to be so overwhelmed. So you can focus on Valentine's Day. I'll focus on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so this has actually stopped a lot of potential fights for us because we expressed our expectations. We didn't leave room for confusion. We didn't leave room for guessing. And then we see this a lot when people don't know each other's love language, right? And love languages are the five ways that someone likes to receive love. And it's different for each person, and it could be a mix of all five of them, but you have your top one. So let's take a minute and shout out the five love languages. Help me out, guys. Words of affirmation, physical touch, acts of service, quality time. One more? Gifts. All right, cool. So the five love languages are physical touch, words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, and gifts. Now, do you know your own personal language? How do you like to receive love? 
and you can shout this out, gifts. <laughs> First service, someone said all of them. <laughs> For those in relationships, do you know the other person's love language? Can you shout them out? <laughs> it's funny sitting from this view because you see the couples that like, they know it. So they're like, yeah, that's right. And then the other ones that are like, nah, baby, that ain't it. <laughs> so I'll give an A for participation and we gonna move on. So just in case I started any fights for later, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so in our key text of Matthew 25, Jesus is talking to his disciples. These are his personal followers. And he's talking to them about the end of the age. But that's not the focus of what we're looking at today. We're looking at the expectation that Jesus expresses. So let's break this down a little bit. Verse 31. When the Son of Man, which is Jesus, comes in his glory and all the angels with him... He will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. So let's stop right there. Sheep follow their shepherd. Why? Yep, because they know and they trust him. This verse specifically says, as a shepherd, but as believers, who do we believe or who do we call our good shepherd? Jesus, the son of man. And we see this reference specifically in John a few times. In John 10, 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And then a little bit later in verse 27, he says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. In these short verses, you can see the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. You see the relationship we're supposed to have, we should work towards having with Jesus. A good shepherd guides, protects, feeds, cares for their sheep. And these are all things that we see Jesus do. Now back to Matthew. Verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. What's the common thread through all those bolded words? Those are acts of service. They are all actions. Because love is not a feeling, it's an action. To truly love someone is an intentional choice to act. And that hits. That hits hard because <laughs> it changes, you know, all the lovey-dovey things. <laughs> so when reading this verse, I was trying to see it from different perspectives because off face value, this was a challenge for me. And this verse is all about acts of service, specifically acts of mercy. And to be honest, I'm an acts of service person. So you would think that I'd understand this, I'd run with this verse, but no. <laughs> because it's easy to just read it and think about your friends and your family, like, okay, sure, no problem, no questions asked, I'll do all these things. Up until you read, I was a stranger. And then it's like, hold up, a stranger? How, I don't even know them. I don't know if they deserve it. I don't know if they've earned it. I don't know if they're just going to keep expecting more and more and more. Do, honestly, do I get anything out of it? How do I love a stranger? But that's the point. Listen to this carefully. Like sheep who follow their shepherd, if... If we follow Jesus and how he treated and served people, 
then we know that true faith doesn't only apply to the people who deserve it. And I'm emphasizing this condition so much because that's what makes Jesus' acts of service that much more special. They weren't reserved only for the people who were good enough. Jesus actually washes the feet of the person who turns him over to be put on the cross. So we can see that there is fruit and there is evidence of love, of true God love. In John 15, 5 and 8, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples, to be my followers. Loving and serving like Jesus brings glory to God the Father because we're showing that we're following Jesus and his example, that we're growing in him, that we're maturing in him, that we're not just hearing, but we're doing. True faith does not stay bottled up. Jesus' whole mission on earth was to share the gospel, the good news. And what did he teach about? Not about works, but about Faith, love, and hope. And to be honest, it's really typical to see someone who's new to the faith be on fire for God. You know, they're on cloud nine, everything is good. God's done so many good things, he's great, all the things. But then when life hits, it's very quick to be like, where's God now? But that's not what we're promised. That's not what we're told. It's unrealistic for us to think like that. <laughs> So the whole point of this series specifically is to encourage you to ignite that fire again. To keep working towards and keep pushing to be more like Jesus. Matthew 28, 18 and through 20 says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And look, we got to experience and witness that this morning. There was nine this service, eight first service. That's absolutely amazing what God is doing in those people's lives, and we get to witness that. Sometimes we make things a little bit more complicated than what they need to be. But look, for all those people that were baptized, an encouraging word, uh, I see you, I'm praying for you, lets them know that they're not in this alone, that they have family here in the church, outside the church, that can be there for them when, when their fire starts to dwindle, because it's going to happen. True faith doesn't stay within the, lock, the walls of a church building. True faith is what invites more and more people into church to get them to know God. And we've all heard the saying, non-Christians don't read the Bible, they read Christians. And we all know what it feels like when we did something that wasn't exactly like Christ. And they're like, well, that's not very Christian of you. And the slap in the face that feels like. But it's true. Even non-Christians know the popular stories of Jesus. They know how he helped people, how he cared for them, and how he served them. So it's very quick to be like, that's not him. <laughs> Some of the popular stories are Jesus feeds the 5,000. He heals the sick. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He preached and taught to the masses. He washed his disciples' feet. There's actually a Super Bowl commercial based off of this. And 110 million people were watching the Super Bowl. So they know. And they will call us out. <laughs> but what I think is so admirable is how Jesus led through servanthood. And that's actually a type of leadership. Servant leadership, to serve those who follow you. You put their needs above your own. 
So if we're ever looking for an example of leadership and how to go about it, we have the perfect example. In Mark 10, 45, it says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for many. Can you even imagine the intentionality, the humility, and the honor it takes to be the Son of God and still serve those who are going to persecute you? So reading about his leadership, you're just like, how? How? And you might be like, well, he could do it. He's the son of God. I can't do that. I'm barely, I'm barely keeping up with where I'm at. <laughs> and that's understandable. That's real. But just like Pastor Josh shared in week one, it's not our power, but God's power at work in us that we're able to do these things. But we have to remain connected to our source. We have to remember who it's for. So it's all about perspective. And perspective is a way of thinking about, understanding something, or a point of view. So we need to start and we can start looking as our acts of service to others are actually acts of worship to God. And when we look at these acts of service as acts of worship, it changes everything. And it kind of makes it a twofold opportunity. As we are given, we give. As we have been given, we give. As we receive, they receive. Out of an overflow, out of an outpour of what God is doing in our lives, we can share that with others. Kind of makes you think of when you teach your child how to share and you see them on the playground actually share the toy versus beating the other child with it. <laughs> and you're like, okay, they get it. And it's like, they're learning, they're growing. That's exactly what it's like with God. When we serve and we follow the footsteps of Jesus, we get to minister to God. We get to show that we're learning, we're growing, we're acting on it, we're maturing. And to be 100% honest, Technically, we don't have to do anything. We really don't. We have free will. But we get to do these things. We get to be part of what God is doing. We get to be used for his glory. We get to be someone's first encounter with God here on earth. We get to be God's love on this side. And that's the expectation that Jesus expresses in Matthew 25. I think some of the best marriage advice that I received was to outdo each other in service, which sounds nice, but it, it's work. <laughs> so if my, my husband asked me to make him coffee in the morning, you know, I'll make it all nice, warm up the milk, put the sugar, put it in the thermos he likes, set it to the side the way that he wants it. Would I rather sleep the extra five minutes? Yeah, <laughs> but he likes the way I make his coffee. And if not, he wouldn't ask me to do it. But it's also the same thing as when he cleans the kitchen after I cook dinner. We're taking care of each other. And even something that has helped me in marriage to love is to take a step back and reflect on the fact that I'm the only one who gets to love him like this, in this capacity, and vice versa. So instead of looking at it of, God, you gave me this man. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he said the same thing about me. <laughs> it's, I'm living in an answered prayer. What I have prayed for, the blessing God has given me, I'm going to take care of it. And I'm going to show him I appreciate that he gave it to me. And this goes to other relationships, other interactions too. At the beginning of the month, I actually had the opportunity to go to D.C. for the National Prayer Breakfast. And um, it was a very cool experience. <laughs> One of the speakers shared, to do's never finish, but to be is much more valuable and long-lasting. I'm a to-do list person. I love checking off the tasks on my list, honestly. 
it just brings me joy. And it's simple. It's like done, move on to the next thing. But to be, that's that intentional action, that's that intentional to choice to act, to love, to pick people instead of just doing the task. So please don't look, think of what I'm saying today as being about works. I'm not talking about a to-do list. I'm talking about a to-be list, to be more like Jesus. In John 15, 13, it says, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. The greatest act of love that Jesus talks about is exactly what he did for each and every one of us. And he calls us his friends. The son of God, the prince of peace, the king of kings calls you his friend. And I'm not saying forgo all discernment and not be saved, be codependent, let people walk all over you. I'm not saying that at all. But the same things that we can say to disqualify other people as if they didn't deserve it, they didn't earn it, are the same things that could have been said against us. And it's a day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, and sometimes even a second by second intentional decision to be like Jesus. But here's, here's a relief. On this side of eternity, perfection isn't going to happen. And that's fine. So that shouldn't be our focus. Our focus should be on consistency. Consistently working on our spiritual habits. Consistently trying to be like Jesus. And it takes time. But even slow progress is progress. Even slow progress is growth. In John 13, 15, Jesus says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. He set the expectation and he showed us how to live it out. But it's not always a one size fits all. We've all been given gifts and talents that we should use to help others and build God's kingdom. And honestly, if you don't know where to start, we have multiple serving teams here at the church. There's a place for you to use your gifts to show God's love here at Family Church and well beyond these walls. If you like to cook, who likes to cook? Taking a mental picture right now. <laughs> Food is the unsaid sixth love language. <laughs> There's a meal ministry. That anytime someone's going through a life circumstance, good or bad, we prepare meals for them. There's actually a meeting this afternoon if you're interested. You like to host, you like to welcome people, hospitality team. Your smile is what could be someone's answered prayer. That they're like, God, I need you to show me something. And the way that you greet them when they walk through those walls is how they know, God heard me. You like working with kids and teens? Bless your heart. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> Miss Sessie's in the booth back there. <laughs> there are kids, there are teens that need your perspective, need your advice, need your life experiences so that they don't go that same route. You like to pray? We have a prayer team. There's power in prayer. You like to sing, act, play music? There's a team for that too. Let's take a moment right now and ask the Lord to reveal to us where we are called to serve. We can pray, where can I increase my service in my marriage, to my kids, my neighbors, a stranger, my church? Where can I serve at church, God? And let me tell you this, if you lack, serve. That's God's formula for success. I want to take a moment, if anyone hasn't asked God to come into their lives, and we pray this together as a family. Dear God, I come to you just as I am. I believe that Jesus Christ 
is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so glad we were able to connect together today. If this impacted you in any way, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like and subscribe to this channel and head over to FamilyChurchNY.com to take your next steps.